Welcome to Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Daniel Pineda. We have a great program this week. We have our news stories, community bulletin board, and 55 plus news. But first, a social media reminder. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. Also on Facebook and WERA 96.7. FM. And now on to our first news story for this week. As of Friday morning, March 4th, reports show the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Arlington increased by 213 for the week, up to 40,260. The fact that the number of new cases is diminishing does not change the fact that, in spite of the common knowledge about masks and social distancing, Another 213 Arlingtonians still got sick this week. We at Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News would continue to monitor the situation as the winter months continue. As for vaccinations, we examined Arlington County's vaccination tracker. According to that site, 196,948 Arlingtonians aged five and above have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. They show that figure as 86.9% of their estimated eligible population of 226,754 Arlingtonians. 29,806 Arlingtonians remain unvaccinated. Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for 5 through 11 year olds is still available at the following locations. Arlington Mail Community Center, that's located at 909 South Dinwiddie Street and Walter Reed Community Center, that's located at 2909 16th Street South. Walk-ins for 5 through 11 year olds are available Monday through Friday from 2 p.m. to 6.45 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. For more information, consult the Arlington County website. And now on to our next news story for this week. Effective Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, Arlington County will no longer require masks for the public and most employees while inside county government facilities. This decision follows new guidance from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, issued on February 25, 2022, which updated how it monitors COVID-19's impact on our communities. The CDC's new tool, COVID-19 Community Levels, looks at hospital beds being used, hospital admissions, and the total number of new COVID-19 cases in an area to determine a level of low, medium, or high. Currently, Arlington County is low, meaning individuals may choose to wear a mask based on personal preference and level of risk of developing severe illness. For the public and most employees, Masks will no longer be required inside county facilities, so long as Arlington is in the low level. Masks are still required in some specific locations, such as public transportation and where health or medical services are provided. People may choose to mask at any time. People with symptoms, a positive test, or exposure to someone with COVID-19 should wear a mask. People who are at increased risk of severe illness and family, friends, and coworkers who spend time with them should consider taking extra precautions even when the COVID-19 community level is low. 
The Arlington County Board expressed disappointment in Governor Glenn Youngkin's veto of House Bill 670. This bill, which passed the House of Delegates 65 to 35 and the Senate 29 to 19, would have empowered the county board rather than the county manager to appoint an independent policing auditor. The role of the independent policing auditor was to conduct investigations into police misconduct. The recommendations for the bill were implemented following extensive research and public engagement led by the county's police practices group. The process involved the participation of county stakeholders, including civil rights groups, police officers and leaders, and residents, as well as valuable input from subject matter experts. The intention of the ordinance was to balance transparency and trust while strengthening relationships between the police and their community. County Board Chair Katie Crystal stated, the Arlington community has created a community oversight board ordinance informed by national best practices and empowered to work with an independent policing auditor to conduct concurrent yet independent investigations with law enforcement. ACPD and our individual officers set a very high standard for professionalism and adding community oversight only serves to improve legitimacy, ensure accountability, and increase transparency. Chair Crystal added that she hopes to meet with the governor and his staff to address their apparent misunderstanding of Arlington's intentions. The independent policing auditor would have been able to report and make recommendations, but neither the community oversight board nor the independent policing auditor would provide binding disciplinary determinations. The veto seems to have been made based on a concern inapplicable to Arlington's community oversight board ordinance. The governor's veto states, investing in a single politically appointed individual, the power of judge, jury, and executioner without any input from law enforcement officers or delineated qualifications for such individual constitutes an undue burden for those who protect and serve the community. The phrase judge, jury, and executioner does not apply to the role of the proposed auditor, but it is a very good description of Governor Yunkin's veto. We well, now on to our last news story for this week. Finally in the news, here is an update concerning the county's support for Arlington Independent Media. County Manager Mark Schwartz has released the proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year. It is several hundred pages long, with many of those pages devoted to 10-year histories, which might not be strictly necessary for someone who is interested only in the coming year. At any rate, there is an entry for Arlington Independent Media on page 692. The proposed budget for AIM is $381,579, which is 0% change from last year's budget. This is the first time in a number of years that the amount has not been reduced. Although that is not bad news, it could hardly be an occasion for celebration since another entry lists audio slash visual equipment for county conference rooms at $668,000, while AIM has to cover many more functions with their funding. It appears that the county management does not consider Arlington Independent Media to be particularly quote-unquote essential to the community. However, those of us who have worked with AIM over the years realize that it is up to us to earn that distinction. Well, that does it for the news for this week. Now on to our community bulletin board stories. Hi, and welcome to CBB. 
Our first event is from the Strange Lands Book Club. Join them in March to discuss The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie. Here's an outline of the story. For centuries, the kingdom of Iradan has been protected by a god known as the Raven. He watches over his territory from atop a tower in the powerful port of Vastai. His will is enacted through the Raven's lease, a human ruler chosen by the god himself. His magic is sustained by the blood sacrifice that every lease must offer. And under the Raven's watch, the city flourishes. But the Raven's tower holds a secret. Its foundations conceal a dark history that has been waiting to reveal itself and to set in motion a chain of events that could destroy Iraden forever. So that's the gist of the story. Until further notice, this book club will meet virtually on Zoom. New members are always welcome. You don't have to read the book to join, but it's encouraged. You can register on Meetup to receive an event reminder and to get the Zoom link to join. A Zoom account is not required to join. For more information, contact Gaby at G-S-A-N-T-A-O-L-A-L-L-A at arlingtonva.us or just call 703-228-6319. That's on Wednesday, March 16th from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. This is, of course, a virtual event. Next up, free 2021 tax preparation assistance is still being offered through the Arlington County Public Library. You can still get certified tax counselors to prepare your return for free. It's being presented in partnership with AARP for people with limited income. Remember to bring tax returns from the last two years, correspondence from the IRS or your state and local taxing authorities, social security cards to show the taxpayer ID numbers for every individual on your return, a government issued photo ID for each taxpayer, Checking your savings account info if you want to direct deposit or refund or direct debit any amount due. Other official forms including W-2s, 1099s, and for a business, bring a summary list of the income and expenses. Also bring information about any other form of income, including cash. Bring the IRS letter 6475 if you have one and the IRS letter 6419, if you have one of those. Also bring records of any federal, state, or local income tax that you paid if they're not shown on the income documents. Finally, any other records showing possible deductions, health insurance, and credits. The service is available by appointment only at Columbia Pike Branch Library through April 15th. The available dates and times are Tuesdays from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m., Wednesdays from 11 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., Fridays from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m., and Saturdays and Sundays from 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. You can get more information and make an appointment at novataxaid.org. Help is also available at other library locations. Just check the Arlington County Library website. Our next event is for middle schoolers in grades 6 through 8. As you might know, the Who Was book series has over 250 titles. Now that the kids have learned so many fascinating facts about trailblazers, legends, innovators, and folks who helped shape the world we live in, it's time for a pop quiz. It's their chance to join in for this fun-filled trivia game, and they'll find out who's really a history buff and who's just a history bluff. No registration is required. Attendance is first come, first served until seating capacity is reached. A word about COVID-19 safety. Effective March 3rd, masks are now optional inside Arlington Public Library facilities, but we think they're still a good idea. When visiting the library, the county visitor face covering policy from the Arlington County government is in effect. Call 703-228-5260 for more information. That's on Friday, March 18th from 3 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. 
in the Longfellow Room at Westover Branch Library, 1644 North McKinley Road, Suite 3. Our next event comes from the people at Families Unplugged. It's a chance to have expert instructors teach you about the work of the artist Hilma of Clint. They'll also guide you through a drawing project inspired by that artist. The cost is $8 per person. This class is open to all ages, but it's recommended for people aged three and up. Each person, including adults, attending the program must register and all children must be supervised by a participating adult. You can register online or call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 730-022. That's on Saturday, March 19th, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon at Arlington Mill Community Center, 909 South Dinwiddie Street. Next up, it's time to get crafty at Westover. This month, they will be welcoming spring by making festive wreaths. All materials will be provided. This program is intended for adults 18 and older. Effective March 3rd, masks are now optional inside Arlington Public Library facilities, but we think they're still a good idea. You can register through the library website. For more information, call 703-228-5260. That's on Saturday, March 19th, from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. at Westover Branch Library, 1644 North McKinley Road, Suite 3. Our final event is for adults and teens in grades six and up. It's a chance to learn about the possibilities of the glow forge and make a craft. This time the project will be assembling four inch square wooden barn quilt coasters cut out on the glow forge laser cutter. No experience is required. Materials, tools, and instructions will be provided. Once again, all attendees age two and older regardless of vaccination status, will have to wear a mask while inside all Arlington Public Library facilities. You can call 703-228-7718 or email lib-makers at arlingtonva.us for more information. You can register through the library website. That's on Monday, March 21st from 3 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. in the shop room at Central Library, 1015 North Quincy Street. Now it's time for 55 Howdy, Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. You ready for some St. Patrick's Day fun and shenanigans? Here's a chance to enjoy some live music and packaged snacks to celebrate St. Patty's Day at Aurora Hills. Don't forget to wear green. This event is sponsored by the Aurora Hills Advisory Committee. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-890-01. And that's on Wednesday, March 16th, from 1 o'clock to 2.30 p.m. at Aurora Hills Community Center, 735 18th Street South. Next up. Celebrate St. Patrick's Day and Irish Americans' crucial role in Northern Virginia and Arlington history. John Verana, the Burke Historical Society president, will portray a hypothetical, yet historically inspired, Irish immigrant. From his life in Ireland, his voyage to New York, and his journey across the country, he meets with experiences both emblematic and unusual. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-400-12. And that's on Thursday, March 17th, from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. at Lubber Run Community Center, 300 North Park Drive. Or you can participate online as a virtual event with the activity number of 913 913- 400-13. Our next event is for opera lovers and learners. It's a chance to enhance your appreciation of the magnificent art and drama of opera. Volunteer George Chetty 
will set the stage for each opera, providing the storyline, composer, and other interesting background info. Musical selections from well-known operas will be played, professional commentary will be provided, and group discussion will follow. This next session will feature Don Carlo by Giuseppe Verdi. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-300-04, and it's on Wednesday, March 16th, from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. at Lubber Run Community Center, 300 North Park Drive. Next up, pruning principles. Your shrubs and woody plants need care and pruning. And now is the time to do it before the spring growth. Here's a chance to learn basic principles of woody plant pruning and ask questions about how to prune your favorite shrubs. This class will be outdoors, weather permitting. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-401-04. And that's on Monday, March 21st, from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. at Lover Run Community Center, 300 North Park Drive. Next up, we got short stories discussion. Now, short stories pack a lot in just a few pages. Here's a chance to take turns reading a story out loud and then discuss it afterwards. It'll be facilitated by 55-plus volunteer Bill Turner. The story for this session is The Last Spin by Evan Hunter. This program will be offered simultaneously in person and virtually. You can sign up based on your preference. Register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number for the live event is 913-300-08. And it's on Thursday, March 21st from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. The online virtual event is at the same time, but the activity number is 913-300-09. Our final event is a chance to enjoy an afternoon of live acoustic music performed by Arlington residents Ed Girovasi and Phil Rosen. The selections will feature classic pop, folk, and blues favorites from across the decades. Packaged refreshments will be provided by Langston Brown Advisory Committee. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913 913- 301-05, and that's on Wednesday, March 23rd from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Langston Brown Community Center, 2121 Culpeper Street. Anyway, that's all I got for 55 Plus News.
For every day we seek it And we find it everywhere You could call it quality Here we call it care And that concludes this week's show. We will be back next week with more news from Arlington. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. This is Heth Munson, producer of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News, with an additional message. This is the last regular installment of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News that I will be able to produce from a location in Arlington. I will continue to produce the show, to the extent that I can, from a new location 70 miles away. When Arlington Independent Media is finally able to reopen their television studio for programs, I think it will be time for the next producer and crew to gradually take over. I intend to continue to contribute to Arlington Independent Media through my other shows, Radio Free Filler and Late Night Filler. Meanwhile, look to the future for a new, revitalized incarnation of the Arlington Weekly News.